Welcome in everyone, this is Sean with MTG808 Jr. and today we are going to be doing the Ravnica Allegiance set review for standard popper purposes. Um, we'll be looking at all the cards, um, but we'll probably only be going into detail on the ones that I think are likely to see play. Um, and we're going to kick things off here in white. So, oh, I guess if I click on these... Okay, there. Okay, so here in white, Arrester's Zeal. Um, we've seen one white instant target creature gets plus two, plus two into end of turn, being kind of like the staple for a white combat trick, and lots of them have been seeing play in the various white aggro decks. Um, I don't think this is better than Moment of Triumph, um, but I do think it's better than Take Heart. Um, being able to gain two life is very relevant when a good majority of the decks are aggressive, even if you're on the offense or defense. So I think Moment of Triumph is slightly better than this. But the addendum on this, if you cast this spell during your main phase, that creature gains flying into end of turn. That does give the white decks a fair amount of reach that they didn't have before, right? You used to have to pay a, play a 2 mana plus 2 plus 2 trick in Mighty Leap to get that effect. So I do think Arrestor's Zeal is going to see some play in Standard Pauper. Um, it, it, I could be wrong, and it could just edge out um, Moment of Triumph as the premier one white combat trick of choice. So expect to see Arrester Zeal seeing play here. Um, Elite Arrester, one mana zero three human soldier, pay a blue and a colorless, tap it to tap target creature. This card is not in the regular uh, Ravnica Allegiance set. I believe the only way to get this is through, uh, or the only way to get it in real life is through the, um, what's it called? The Dovin Bond uh, Planeswalker deck. So the price on these might be a little expensive your ability to get them um might be a little bit hampered but uh it, it is a pretty powerful effect like fan bearer fan bearer was a one on a one two that you could pay two to tap it to tap target creature this is a little more restrictive it can't attack on its own and you need to be playing blue as your second color so um I don't think it'll see nearly as much play as Fanbearer did, but it is a very powerful effect. So if you're going to be white-blue anyway, this is one to think about if you are able to get your hands on some hard copies of it, or if you're just playing on MTG Arena, you just need to burn wild cards for it. Uh, Twilight Panther, here we have a 1 mana, 1, 2. You can pay a black mana to give it Death Touch. Um, this is basically Skittering Heartstopper, but it, you need to be in two colors to play it. Skittering Heartstopper is pretty good though, although we, I do think that uh, Hired Poisoner has kind of just edged it out in terms of um, decks that want to have a bunch of, or that want to have access to a cheap Death Touch creature. So this, while this card is good enough to see play, right? Skittering Heartstopper was good enough to see play. I don't think it's going to see play over Hired Poisoner in most decks. Um, th that extra point of toughness, you know, if you really want it, you could play Scaring Heartstopper, and you don't have to um, commit to two different colors of mana. It is a cat spirit. I, I don't think that's going to be relevant, though. Uh, two mana, one three flyer. We have seen this see a little bit play, um, although the only one that we've seen see play in um, Standard Popper was seeing play because it was a vampire, which was a relevant creature type. Don't think Concordia Pegasus is going to see much play. Impassioned Orator, one white, one colorless for a 2-2. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. In the regular white aggro decks, this is strictly worse than a 2-mana 2-2. But in the token um, white aggro decks, right, there is a pretty solid green-white token list. Um, I do think that this card um, is a reasonable 2-drop, right? If you're playing this alongside Sapling Migration and Call the Cavalry and stuff like that, um, th this guy does seem very good, so he's not going to go into every deck, but the deck that he is going to go into is really going to want him. This card is is a little weird. Just a card's portal. One white, one colorless instant. Exile target creature you control, then return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. It gains first strike until end of turn. Basically, this is like a very defensive combat trick, right? You can exile your creature that's tapped. It comes back in untapped, and it has first strike. Um, you you. I don't think you're going to want to include this in your deck unless you're playing a bunch of creatures with come to play abilities, which a lot of the decks do. Um, not a lot of the white decks do, though, so I'm not sure if this is going to have a home. Um, and then the, giving it first strike just seems uh, a little weird. So th this is a hard card to evaluate. I don't think there's too much synergy in white for this card, but you know, if you pair this with black and you're playing it alongside Dusk Legion Zealots or 
blade jugglers and stuff like that or um or is pair it with blue and you get um salvager of secrets and muse drakes and stuff like that this thing does have some potential but i i think it's just going to be too many hoops to jump through all right um summary judgment this is like um a little worse than gideon's reproach but also a little bit better than gideon's reproach um so summary judgment one white one colorless instant deals three damage to target tapped creature addendum if you cast this spell during your main phase it deals five damage to that creature instead um so this card only works on defense whereas gideon's reproach could hit blockers once they were in combat um but this card does also have the potential to kill a five toughness creature in standard proper i don't know how relevant that's going to be i think gideon's reproach flexibility to just be able to be used on offense or defense means that it's probably going to edge out summary judgment in most decks uh bring to trial one white two colorless sorcery exile target creature with power four or greater um i, I think this is just worse than luminous bonds the exile effect is cute but this there's too many decks that just don't play stuff with four toughness in it this might be a sideboard card um, but I, I don't think it's going to be better than Luminous Bonds. Exposed to Daylight, a white, two colorless, instant, destroy tiger, artifact, or enchantment, scry one. Um, Invoke the Divine was is already in the format. Um, it's been seeing marginal amounts of play in sideboards. Gaining four life may be better than scry. Scry may be better than gaining four life. I don't know. Those These cards are pretty replaceable. Um... Hazda Officer, 3 mana, 3-2, three, when it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Not the greatest rate for not the greatest body. Don't think this guy's going to see play. 10th District Veteran, same story, right? 3 mana, 2, 3 Vigilance, when it attacks, untap another target creature you control. You have to have a bunch of creatures that uh, have tap abilities in order to want to play this over some of the other options we have on 3. If you're playing this alongside, like, Spear Spewer, um maybe but spear spear seems to want to be in a red black deck or just a straight red deck i don't know um this guy has a little more potential than the officer but uh i'm i'd be skeptical if it sees play this guy is great um civic stalwart four mana for a three three elephant soldier when it enters the battlefield creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn so this means that alongside angel of dawn um you now have two creatures that um give you a go wide reward so i i expect this guy to see a, a lot of play the the problem with inspired charge um is that if you don't have a big giant board then inspired charge doesn't do a lot this guy at, at worst is going to be a four mana three three which is fine right even if you only have one other creature you play it as a four mana three three give your one creature a bonus for a turn great and then you have a four mana three three syndicate messenger four mana two three flying afterlife one afterlife is the orzov keyword the black white keyword and it means when it this creature dies you get a one one white black spirit creature token with flying uh, for each point of afterlife that it has so when this guy dies you get a 1-1 um spirit token creature i don't think this card is going to be better than parhelion patrol in most white decks but um i could be wrong like this guy is a decent rate and limited so i'd be surprised if it was completely off the table for standard popper but I, I think that most white decks just have better options for four mana um knight of sorrows similar story five mana three three can block an additional creature each combat and then afterlife one so it leaves behind a one one flying um spirit token again five mana for a three three not the greatest that can block an additional creature each combat is not the greatest either since the body is so small don't think this one's going to see play watchful giant six mana three six giant soldier when watchful giant enters the battlefield create a one one white human creature token there's just better six drops in the format if you um if you want to play them although a three six is big and getting a one one you know you're paying six mana for four power and seven toughness so it is a lot i just don't know how many white decks are going to want to play a six a six mana creature fairy duelist moving on to the blue cards a blue and a colorless for a one two flash flying when fairly fairy duelist enters a battlefield target creature and opponent controls gets minus two minus zero until end of turn this isn't the most powerful card but it has enough text on it that it does have some potential i don't know what deck is going to want this but um being able to shrink your opponent's creature when they attack you and then having an extra point of of power to um you know start gang blocking some stuff um this card does have some potential i've been um surprised at how often it is annoying and limited um so it when usually when a card is good and limited it's probably going to see be fine in standard proper persistent pers petitioners this one is very interesting i 
um, <laughs> this this deck might just be broken in standard popper. Um, two mana, one three, human advisor. Um, it has an ability, one mana, tap, target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. You can tap four untapped advisors you control, this is a human advisor. Um, target player puts the top 12 cards of their library in their graveyard. And here's the most important line of text, a deck can have any number of cards named persistent peti petitioners in it. So, we saw the Rat Colony deck um, do surprisingly well, it came in second in one of our tournaments. Um, Ty just waited until he had like seven or eight rats in play, and then just needed two of them to, to get through in order for it to be lethal. Um, Persistent Partitioners does, is not as weak as the rat deck is to spot removal, right? Most spot removal in standard popper does not kill three toughness creatures. Moment of Craving, Shock, um, Lightning Strike if you're playing in paper. If you're playing on MTG Arena, Lightning Strike isn't legal, right? So, uh, especially on MTG Arena, I think per Persistent Partitioners is going to be a pretty powerful um, standard popper deck. Um, you know, it, it just plays defense until you get four of these in play, and then once you have four of these in play, you just need like three turns, four turns to um, to mill your opponent out. So um, I I expect to see some people try and make this deck work, and we'll see. How, we'll we'll just have to wait and see how powerful it is compared to you know the the aggressive decks. Quench, um, one blue, one colorless, instant counter target spell unless its controller plays pays two. Um, so this is pretty good in the early game. It's going to counter a lot of stuff, whether it's a creature or a non-creature. Um, it's going to be pretty bad in the late game, right, when your opponent just has a bunch of extra mana. Um, so I don't think Quench is going to see a lot of play. I think it's significantly worse than both Syncopate and Essence Scatter. Um, so I, I don't think Quench is going to see a ton of play. Sage's Rose Savant, one blue, one colorless for a 2 1 Vidalcan Wizard, very important creature type. When Sage's Rose Savant enters the battlefield, scry 2. So the blue red popper um, Wizards deck was, some versions of it was playing um, Omen Speaker just to have an extra 2 mono Wizard. Um, Omen Speaker is not very aggressive, and the rest of the deck is trying to be aggressive, so this guy would probably replace that, although I don't know um, how powerful the Wizard deck is. Um, compared to a lot of the other decks that are around. So it, this does have a home in the wizard deck. Just don't know how good the wizard deck is going to be moving forward. Shimmer of Possibility. This card is reasonable. Don't know what the home for it is going to be just yet, but uh, this, this card is powerful enough to see play, I think. One blue, one colorless for a sorcery. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Anticipate... I don't know if Anticipate... I don't think Anticipate is currently in Standard. So, we haven't seen... You know, we, we don't have a deck that was already playing Anticipate to compare this to. Anticipate is an instant, and you just look at one less card. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a lot of card selection for just two mana. So, if there is a deck that has the time to um, wait around, and then just has incentive to want to go find specific cards, Shimmer Possibilities is a possibility. All right, moving on, we got Slime Bind, one blue, one colorless, Enchantment Auro with Flash, enchanted, Enchant Creature, Enchanted Creature gets minus four, minus zero. Not quite straight up removal. I don't know, um, you know, if there is like a mono blue deck, um, this is, this might be um, your best um, removal spell. However, the creature, if it has more than four power, it can still attack, it can definitely still block. Um, so Slime Bind is not the greatest. Um, it, it does... It's at its best when your opponent is attacking you. You throw down slime bind on their creature, and then you block or double block it to, to get it off the board, and then you don't lose your guys because um, the four the four power is gone. But um, I I don't think this is going to see too much play in standard popper. All right, arresters, admonition, admonition. Yeah, that's how you say it. Okay, instant return target creature to its owner's hand for three mana, a blue and two colorless, and uh, addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, draw a card. So we've we've had Crashing Tide in the format for a while, um, which is this card. Um, it's an I think it's a sorcery. Um, return target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card, and then you can play it at instant speed if you have a Merfolk in play. Um, that card, even in the Merfolk deck, wasn't seeing a ton of play, so I don't think Arrestor's Admonition is going to see a ton of play. Three mana is just too much to to pay for a bounce spell in a format where most creatures cost one, two, or three. Um, but you know. It replacing itself is reasonable. Clear the mind. 
this is um, the the best way to interact with a graveyard that we have currently in standard popper so this is interesting three mana sorcery target player shuffles their graveyard into their library draw a card um this will break up the soul salvage loop um that a lot of the graveyard decks are refer are relying on um however you are going to be shuffling back in all their all their gas all their spot removal but it will turn off soul salvage and salvager of secrets and key to chronicler so i don't know if this is the best access to try to fight the control decks on but it is an option that we haven't had before. Alternatively, you could also just play this in your control deck, although I don't think that it's going to be better than the Devious Cover-Up endgame. Um, Devious Cover-Up allowed you to shuffle four cards in, um, and that kind of just locks up the endgame for the control decks, so I don't think this is better than Devious Cover-Up. Um, for control decks to shuffle their own library in to never run out of gas, but it might be a reasonable way to try to attack the graveyard, the, the decks that try to have graveyard synergy. All right, moving on. Uh, three mana, three two, vanilla Merfolk Warrior. I don't think the Merfolk deck will play this. Pretty medium creature. Uh, Senate Courier, three mana, one four, flying bird. Um, pay a white and a colorless. Senate Courier gains vigilance until end of turn. So it, it's got decent stats. If you want to um, play defense in the air, this card does a good job. Um, don't know how many decks are going to actually want to do that though. So I'd be skeptical if this sees very much play. Um, Thought Collapse, um, uh, two blue and a colorless instant counter target spell if it, its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. The per Persistent Partitioner's deck might play this. Um, I don't know what other decks, like we haven't seen Cancel seeing a lot of play, and I don't think that milling your opponent for three is going to push Cancel over the edge. Um, so unless there's a dedicated mill deck, which I think the Persistent Partitioner's deck will be, um, I don't think this is going to see play outside of that. Skitter Eel. Um, this guy is kind of big. I don't know what deck is going to want this, what blue deck is going to want this, but this guy is a lot of power and toughness. So it's a 4 mana 3 3 fish crab, and then it has um, the adapt keyword on it. So you can pay th a blue and two colorless to adapt two. Adapt says if this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it, put two plus one plus one counters on it because it has adapt two. So you can play this on turn four, and then on turn five, pay three mana adapt it and then all of a sudden you have a five five so this guy is pretty big as far as blue creatures go don't know what blue decks just want a pile of power and toughness though so while this card is solid don't know what deck is going to want it chillbringer five mana three three flying when chillbringer enters the battlefield tap target creature and opponent controls it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step um most aggro decks that um don't want to be playing five mana spells and even though this one is pretty solid um you, most of the decks in standard popper are kind of going wide so chillbringer i think just doesn't do enough to impact the board to justify paying five mana for a spell humongulus five mana two five hexproof um so hexproof is one of the more powerful keywords in standard popper this guy has a boatload of toughness on top of that and it costs one less than cold water snapper cold water snapper is um you know, the, kind of the bane of the control mirror, I guess you could call it. Um, uh, this guy having two less power is not nearly as powerful, but he does come down a turn sooner, so he is better against the aggro decks. So I'd be surprised if this guy saw zero play or had zero consideration, um, but it, it might have to wait until Cold Water Snapper rotates out before it, it sees a ton of play and gets its time in the sun. Here we have Prying Eyes, um, 6 mana, 2 blue, 4 colorless for an instant, draw 4 cards, then discard 2 cards. Um, Blue-Black Control may want this card. I, I don't think this is as good as a kicked Secrets of the Golden City, but it's probably better than a not, or I'm sorry, not kicked, um, what's the call, card keyword called? Ascend. Ascended Secrets of the Golden City. This is not as good as an Ascended Secrets of the Golden City, but it is better than... Um, a not ascended secrets of the golden city um costing six though is kind of steep a lot of the times you're playing the divination secrets of the golden city notion rain um effect to try to draw into lands so for this card to be good you have to already have a bunch of lands in play but the control decks do um lose to flood out sometimes and this card helps protect against that so I, i'd be surprised if this saw zero play i don't think it's going to be more than a one or a two of in the control decks though if that all right moving on to black uh, Thirsting Shade is a 1 black mana 1-1 one, one shade. It has lifelink, and then the shade ability is to pay mana to 
pump it up. Uh, but this shade is the most expensive shade we've seen in a long time. You have to pay a black and two colorless, so three total mana to give it plus one, plus one until end of turn. That is a steep price to pay to turn it into a two, two. However, it is a one mana, one, one lifelink. Lifelink is one of the more powerful keywords in the standard proper format. So um, I don't know what it would take for this card to be good, but it's. I feel like this card is close to being good enough to see play. We'll, we'll see what people end up doing with this. Blade Brand, a black and a colorless instant. Target creature gains death touch until end of turn. Draw a card. So it's a combat trick that replaces itself. Guarantees that whatever you cast it on is going to trade with whatever it's in combat with. Um, it is kind of expensive, though. It Even though it does replace itself, I, I think Infernal Scarring, or not Infernal Scarring, um, what is it called? Supernatural Stamina is going to just be better because um, you, instead of drawing a card and losing your tempo, you get your creature back um, with... Um, supernatural stamina so i i think the decks that want an effect like this are just going to play supernatural stamina although this does allow you to trade up larger supernatural stamina just allows you to trade up um plus two uh gives your creature plus two power all right plague white it is a zombie we don't have zombie synergies currently as far as i know or we haven't seen any seen play um, but it is a one black, one colorless, two one zombie. When plague white becomes blocked, each creature blocking gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this is a a, a pretty good attacker, um, right? It can't really be blocked by small creatures. It trades up against three toughness creatures. Um, if you're a black aggro deck, I, I think this is an option. One toughness is a little bit of a liability in the format, but what can you do? Rakdos Trumpeteer, I think this card is very good. One black, one colorless for a 1-3 menace. Pay a red and three colorless. Rakdos Trumpeteer gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. So a two mana 1-3 menace is pretty good. Um, we, we've seen other two mana menace two drops. Um, the, there's the 2-1 menace pirate for two from Rivals of Ixalan. That card was seeing play in the pirate deck and some of the non-pirate red aggro decks. Excuse me. Um, this guy has Menace, which means you play it on turn 2, it's likely going to hit them on turn 3. That means that it's going to turn on all of your um, Spectacle cards. We're going to get to the Spectacle keyword in a little bit, but basically Spectacle says you can pay something for its Spectacle cost, which is usually cheaper um, if, uh, if an opponent lost life this turn. So you play this on turn 2, you attack with it, they can't really block it because they need to have 2 creatures, and then, um, and then you Spectacle it. Later in the game, you know, if you have the ability to pump it up, they block with their two creatures, there's a good chance you're going to be able to, to trade with both of them with a single pump. If you can double pump this guy, then then he gets pretty big and he's going to be trading up a lot. So I like Rakdos Trumpeteer. He's good on turn two. He's good later in the game. Scales very well. I, I think this guy, if, if there is a black red aggro deck, which I'm certain, almost certain there's going to be, the, this card is going to be great. Grotesque Demise, one black, two colorless, exile target creature with power three or less. We've seen this effect before in Vanquish the Week. Hasn't really seen much play, um, it, especially in real life when um, murder is legal because of its downshifted rarity. Um, on MTG Arena, where murder is not legal, this, this card might be reasonable in some of the, um, the control decks, but I, I think that there's just better removal than this. Okay, moving on... Noxious Grudian, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two Death Touch. We've seen lots of 3 mana, 2-2 two, two Death Touch creatures. The um, Pitiless Gorgon, um, Daggerback Basilisk, both of them have seen fringe amounts of play in the format. Um, this is just another option. It's a little easier on the color requirements than Pitiless Gorgon. Um, I don't think the beast creature type is going to be terribly relevant, so this guy might see play. Undercity's Embrace, this one is interesting. We have not had an Edict effect in a long time. Um effects that make your opponent sacrifice a creature are considered edict effects um this is one of the very few ways to interact with um hexproof creatures because they don't target the creature they target the player so this says three mana target instant target opponent sacrifices a creature if you control a creature with power four or greater you gain four life don't know how much that second line of text is going to come up um the decks that are playing this i don't know how often they're going to have a four power creature in play but making an opponent sacrifice a creature um Against like the decks full of one mana creatures, this card is going to be pretty bad. Um, against the decks with um, Cold Water Snapper and Jade Guardian, this card is reasonable. So I, I think this is a sideboard card, um, but uh, it is the only effect like this that we currently have in the format. So I'd be surprised if this saw absolutely zero play. 
Okay, um, moving on, we got Carrion Imp for Mana 2-3 Flying Imp. When Carrion Imp enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard. If you do, you gain 2 life. Um, so this only exiles creature cards, so it, uh, it can't stop... Um, it can't remove spells from the control deck's graveyard to keep them from getting back with Salvager of Secrets or Gitu Chronicler, but it can exile um, the Gitu Chronicler or um, Salvager of Secrets itself if uh, you want to break up the Soul Salvage loop. So this this would probably be a sideboard card against those decks. Um, I, I don't think the stats are good enough for it to see main deck play. All right, uh, Dead Revels, four mana sorcery, uh, or one black, three colorless sorcery. Spectacle, one black, one colorless. So you can cast it for four regularly or for its spectacle cost, which is just two mana, if your opponent has lost life this turn. And it says return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So in a control deck, this will probably just be strictly worse than Soul Salvage. In an aggressive deck, um, this card will be gr much better than Soul Salvage. For an aggressive deck to be able to just pick up two of their dead creatures, um, this is essentially better than drawing two cards, and it only costs two mana if you've hit your opponent, um, which most aggressive decks will be trying to do. So um, I think this is going to be a good card, at the very least a very powerful sideboard card against the control decks to just um, re-gas up your hand after they kill all your dudes early. Ill-gotten inheritance. Um, I've been very impressed with this card in limited. I would be surprised if this saw no play in standard proper. This might even um, open up a bunch of new archetypes in standard proper. So ill-gotten inheritance, four mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, ill-gotten inheritance deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. You can also pay six mana and sacrifice it to have it deal four damage to target opponent, and you gain four life. So you play this on turn four. You're just draining your opponent every turn. So you can play this in a control deck to, um, you know, just put a really slow clock on your opponent, but to also gain you life to stem the bleeding. Um, but you could also play this in an aggro deck. It helps you race other aggro decks because you're dealing damage to them and you're gaining life each turn. Um, and then it, it gives you a mana sink later in the game when the, your their life total gets whittled down. So I can see this seeing play in the black control decks as well as in the black aggro decks, which means that this might turn into one of the, the role players in the format moving forward. It's it's like um it's like Black's heal Black's Healer's Hawk. Um, Undercity Scavenger, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Undercity Scavenger enters the battlefield. You may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Undercity Scavenger, then scry 2. So this card, um, it can be a 4 mana, 5-5 five, five if you have creatures around that you want to sack. We did build that black-red sacrifice deck um, with Thalid Omnivore. Um, this is another payoff card. I think this is slightly worse than Thalid Omnivore, just because Thalid Omnivore threatens to just like you know turn into a 9 9 or or a 10 10 um yeah it would be a 9 9 or an 11 11 right um whereas this guy is kind of stuck as a 5 5 you only need to sacrifice one creature though and it stays at a 5 5 and then you also get the scry too so i i do think that this creature is powerful enough to see play in that deck i don't think you're going to cut copies of thalad omnivore for this but i think having an additional um big beefy creature at the top of that deck's curve is um appealing I don't know if it's going to see too much play outside of that deck, though. You you have to want to throw away creatures or have a bunch of creatures that already did something when they came into play um, in order to play this. So basically, Dusk Legion Zealot is this card's best friend. Um, moving on, we got Blade Juggler. This is the spectacle card I talked about earlier. It is a 5-mana 3-2 human rogue. Um, when ba Blade Juggler enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to you and you draw a card. So Dusk Legion Zealot has been a four of in like every single black deck that I've ever built in <laughs> in this format. Um, just because being able to replace itself and draw a card is so good. And this card um, is a little narrower because it really is only going to go into the aggressive decks thanks to it having Spectacle. So for Spectacle, if you dealt your... If you dealt damage to your opponent this turn, you can play this card for 3 mana instead of 5 mana. And then it becomes a 3 mana, 3-2 three, that draws you a card when it comes into play, which is an amazing deal. So, um, I, I am quite certain this card is going to see play in red-black aggro. Maybe even just straight black aggro. A any any, a any uh, black aggro deck that can, um, that can be aggressive and cast this should be playing this card, I think. 
Um, Catacomb Crocodile, 5 mana, 3, 7. That's some impressive stats, but not terribly good. Would be very surprised if this sees play. Consigned to the Pit, probably a little too expensive to see play in Sanger Popper. 6 mana, Sorcery, destroy target creature. Consigned to the Pit deals 2 damage to that creature's controller. A little too expensive. Uh, Debtor's Transport, 6 mana, 5, 3, Afterlife, 2. Afterlife, of course, is the Orzhov mechanic. When it dies, you get two, um, you get two one one uh, spirit tokens. So, uh, as far as six drops go, the, this guy isn't bad. Um, that red black sacrifice deck, if it did want a six drop, this is probably the the best one. I don't think it wants a six drop though. So, uh, maybe in the sideboard. I, I don't know what other deck would want this though. Deface, um, one red mana, sorcery, destroy target artifact, or destroy target creature with defender. I don't think there's enough uh, defenders in the format for me to want to play this over smelt. Smelt is, uh, is uh, pretty narrow though, but it being an instant means that um, against the short sword jousting lance decks, you can uh, get them in the middle of combat, which is what you want your smelts to do. Um, there aren't really very many other artifacts that are going to be worth sideboarding a card like this in. Maybe the lockets, but um, if your opponent has open mana, then you killing their locket doesn't really matter. So I, I think Smelt is still going to see play over this. I, I There aren't any defenders in the format that make me want to turn my Smelt into a sorcery. All right, sp uh, Spear Spewer. This card is amazing. Oh my gosh, is this card amazing. Uh, red Goblin Warrior defender for and it's a zero two right not the greatest stats for a red mana one drop um but it has this fancy ability tap it spear spear deals one damage to each player so as long as you are being more aggressive than your opponent this card is just going to keep hitting them every turn and of course if you are playing spectacle cards that means that spectacle is basically going to be on whenever you want it to be so you do need to be a little bit careful in terms of if you start falling behind on the race you want to stop activating this guy but um as, as long as you're ahead in the race this card is going to be amazing so uh, spear spewer definitely great storm strike uh one red instant target creature gets plus one plus one and gains first strike until end of turn scry one we did see precision strike see a little bit of play um in the red decks last season um and this card is just a strict upgrade same card just with scry on it so um i'd be surprised if this saw zero play the the red decks will probably want this feral maka uh there's better cards than a two mana two two vanilla this won't see any play uh one second Uh, gotta stay hydrated. Okay, uh, moving on. Gavel Hide Goblin, 2 mana, 2 1. Goblin Shaman. You can pay a green and 3 colorless to give it plus 2, plus 2 end of, until end of turn. So, a 2 mana, 2 1 is a fine body. Um, 1 toughness is a little bit of a liability, but being able to pump this guy later means that if you are red green um, and you're looking for 2 drops to play, th this is a reasonable option. Alright, Rage Fire. I think this is. Um, from the Domri decks. So a red, a colorless for a sorcery deals three damage to target creature. The fact that this is both a sorcery and it can only hit creatures means I'm very skeptical of this seeing play. Um, I, I think that Bombard is going to just be better if you want an effect like this. And we're going to get to Skewer to the Critics in a minute, but Skewer the Critics is just way better than Rage Fire. Um, Scorch Mark. A red, a colorless instant Scorch Mark deals 2 damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So it's exactly Magma Spray. It just costs 1 colorless extra. Um, this effect is pretty relevant, though, against afterlife creatures. Um, so if you're particularly worried about afterlife creatures or um, stuff like Death Bloom Thalid or Doom to Center and stuff like that that does stuff when it goes to the graveyard, you can sideboard this card. I don't think you want to main deck this effect, though. Act of Treason, this is a reprint. We've already seen this card see play in the Red Black Sacrifice deck. I don't think that effects like this are going to see play outside of um, decks that can abuse, you know, that can sacrifice the um, the creature before giving it back to their opponent. But if you are, if you can't sacrifice the creature, but you're playing against a deck with tons of big creatures, then this becomes a reasonable sideboard card. Don't think you want to ever main deck this, though, unless you can sacrifice the creature. Burn Bright, this is just a strict upgrade over Trumpet Blast. Um, one red, two colorless instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Trumpet Blast did this, except it it said um, 
it costs the same and it said attacking creatures get plus two plus zero until end of turn so if you cast it on defense which i've seen some people do in limited um it gives their creatures plus two plus zero until end of turn which is a little embarrassing so but burn bright you can use on defense um very solid card um we'll probably just replace trumpet blast in the decks that we're already playing trumpet blast all right uh, burning tree vandal one red two colorless for a two one human rogue with riot riot is the gruel or the red green uh keyword and a creature with riot when it enters the battlefield you choose if it gets a plus one plus one counter or haste so this is either going to be a three mana two one with haste or a three mana three two and it also has an ability that says when it attacks you may discard a card if you do draw a card so in the red aggro decks one of the pitfalls of the red aggro decks is that um, they mono flood a lot, um, and if they mono flood, then they usually die. And this card protects against that, and it's a decent body in terms of attacking. So I, I think this card is going to see play in the red aggressive decks. Um, yes. All right, Goblin Gathering. This one's interesting. Three mana sorcery. Create a number of one one red goblin creature tokens equal to two plus the number of cards named Goblin go Gathering in your graveyard. So if you play this card, you're going to want four in your deck because the first one is three mana make two one ones. The second one is three mana make three one ones, and then the the third one is three mana make four one ones, and then the fourth one is three mana make five one ones. Um, so. That red-black sacrifice deck that we were playing might want this effect. Um, it like it was playing Goblin Instigator, which is a two mana make two one ones. Um, so this is just more of the same, but it scales over the course of the game. the The first one is obviously worse, but then the second and third and fourth one are all better. So um, something to consider. Goes really well with Burn Bright. All right, uh, Skewer the Critics. This is um, probably going to be the most impactful card printed. Um, I, I think this and Ill-Gotten Inheritance are going to be the two most impactful cards in the set. So Skewer the Critics, one red, two colorless sorcery. Skewer the Critics deals three damage to any target, so creature or player. There's no Planeswalkers in Standard Popper. Um, but you can spectacle it for one. So if your opponent lost life this turn, then you can pay a red and cast this um, Lightning Bolt level, right? One red, deal three damage to any target. It is a sorcery, so... And if you want to spectacle it, you have to wait until after you attack, so you can't spectacle it to get rid of blockers usually, unless, of course, you have a Spear Spewer or an Ill-Gotten Inheritance. Then you can cast this before combat, remove their blocker, and then bash them for a ton skewer the critics probably the most impactful card in the set for standard popper gore clan wrecker four mana two two riot menace so um it's either going to be a two two haste menace or a three three with menace um and, and it's your choice solid but um i don't think that the red decks want this over other four drops i mean like we've seen red decks some of them are playing the four mana four three rummage card uh rummage when it comes into play some of uh, i think it's called Keldon warlord some of the red decks were playing the four mana three three haste minotaur so you know this compares reasonably well to the haste minotaur so maybe this is going to be the four drop of choice for red decks maybe the red decks just don't want a four drop right because of burning tree vandal and skewer the critics they can just keep their curve low um, so we'll, we'll see if this guy sees play. Rubble reading, completely unplayable. Four mana sorcery, destroy target land, scry two. You're killing their land, which they paid zero mana for, um, by, and you are paying four mana for. So sure, this is going to be great when your opponent's mana screwed, but you're probably going to win that game anyway, if your opponent is that mana screwed. All right. Um, spike wheel acrobat, four mana, five, two um human rogue and then it has spectacle for three so having two toughness means basically anything blocks this and it trades with it but if you uh play a creature on two hit them spectacle this out on turn three and then kill their blockers this guy hits really hard so you know you have to um be playing a build of red that is able to remove your opponent's blockers um reliably to want this card but this card is pretty powerful in the best case scenario and then worst case scenario, it'll probably trade with a two drop. All right, uh, Rubble Belt Recluse, five mana, six five, 
Ogre Berserker, Rubble Belt Recluse attacks each combat if able. Um, this guy is just huge. Those those stats are so big for a 5 drop. Um, and then the attacks each combat if able is, you're probably going to want to attack with your 6-5 each combat anyway. So I, I could see the red decks playing, um, you know, maybe two copies of this at the top of their curve, maybe three. Um, this guy is just huge. Yeah, this, this guy is great. All right, moving on to green. Open the gates. One green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card or gate card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. It's a it's some mana fixing. Um, I I don't think we have a search card like this. Wow. Well, yeah, the adventurous impulse was the other smoother, but it doesn't search. So if you are playing like three colors, this will fix your mana. If you're not playing three colors, you probably just don't want to um, be spending a mana to go get your land. You'd rather just play a land in this slot. Sultai Caretaker, one mana, zero three defender. Tap it and tap an untapped creature you control. Add one mana of any color. This card is not that great. We already have Land of War Elves. If we want to play an Accelerator on turn one, this guy is only an Accelerator if you play this, and then on turn two you play another creature, and then on turn three you get to use this and your creature to make a mana. It, but that also means that you're not attacking with your creature. So this guy is just not very good. Stony Strength, uh, one green instant put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control untap that creature um there are some creatures that say when you put a plus one plus one counter on it um you get an effect i don't think very many of them are common though so um i don't think stony strength is going to be quite good enough but you know just putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature at instant speed and untapping it you know that's um some relevant abilities right you can ambush their creature in combat right untap your your guy that you attacked with and and um ambush their blocker so this this card is reasonable but i'm I, I think it doesn't quite do have a big enough impact to make me confident it'll see play in standard popper gift of strength uh we saw this seeing play um last season before rotation happened i believe it was in uh not almond cat it was an hour of devastation so one green one colorless instant target creature gets plus three plus three and gains reach until end of turn um in that particular format there were a lot of uh, cartouche of knowledges so the green decks wanted to be able to give their creatures reach to just block and make sure they didn't get out raced by the blue decks um healer's hawk and parhelion patrol are both things in this format so while this does not make the creature as big as titanic growth does being able to give reach is a relevant ability you might want to mix up your pump spells just to keep your opponent on their toes root snare this card was already in the format um it is a four of in a in a regular standard deck um but that's only because that standard deck can take advantage of a particular game plan and unfortunately in standard popper you are not able to take advantage of that game plan so being able to fog your opponent fog just means prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn um usually like sometimes it's going to be great when your opponent like alpha strikes you and then you fog um when you would be dead and then you're able to kill them on the crackback um but that's like the best case scenario the rest of the time this card is going to say like two mana prevent six damage which um, I, don't, I don't think you would put, play a card if it just said two mana gain six life so yeah uh, root snare maybe a sideboard card maybe as a one of but i i don't think it's gonna see a ton of play it, it's already been in the format and it hasn't been seeing a ton of play all right um what how do you say this sal reform hybrid human lizard warrior it is a two mana two two with adapt four for six mana so it is a two mana two two until you get up to six mana and then you put six more mana into it and it becomes a six six that is huge um i don't know like the the whole theme of sultai is um it kind of just makes your creatures bigger the more mana that you have right a lot of the Sultai themed cards just kind of help you get mana into play faster. So in a deck with other cards that are helping you to to get your mana out faster and giving you a ton of mana sinks, this might be better than some of the two drops that already exist. But if you're just a straight aggro deck, I think Deep Root Warrior is just going to serve you better um, than this guy in like 
eighty percent of the situations that you're in. Because um, if you're an aggro deck, you just want to be able to make sure you're making your attacks on turns. You know, you play your two drop, and then you want to be make sure you're attacking with it on turn three, four, and five. And Deep Root Warrior does that way better than this. Because this, you don't want to make trades with it early because you want it to live until you can adapt it. Um, th this is a much better late game top deck though. So if if you're building your deck um, around this this idea of getting playing the long game and then just winning with fat then this is your card territorial bore two mana two two whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control territorial bore gets plus one plus one and gains vigilance until end of turn um i think there's just better two drops than this even if you have a deck chock full of creatures with power four or greater um there's better two drops than this titanic brawl two mana instant right instant speed fight spells are um it is an important part of instant speed fight spells because like if they're shooting your creature with a removal spell you can respond by just fighting and then you you have a two for two instead of you know a one for one but you get to kill a creature so um two mana instant this spell costs one less if you cast it if it targets a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it right the the uh, simic keyword right adapt right their theme is plus one plus one counters so this is a removal spell that fits with their theme and then just target creature you control to fights target creature you don't control um might see play we'll see instant speed it leaves me optimistic rabid bite is still better but it is a sorcery all right um how do you say this Sagittar's Volley. Destroy target creature with flying for three mana at instant speed, and it deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. So this is a reasonable sideboard card against Healer's Hawk. Um, your opponent would have to have, like, multiple flyers plus a Healer's Hawk in play for this to be, like, a huge blowout, and a lot of the times their other flyer is um, Parhelion Patrol, which is going to make their Healer's Hawk bigger, which means it's not going to die to this effect. So, um... While this might be good, I, I'd be surprised if Crushing Canopy wasn't just a better sideboard card most of the time. Steeple Creeper, 3 mana, 4, 2, um, and you can pay 4 mana to give it flying until end of turn. It, it is pretty expensive to give this guy flying, and it being a 3 mana, 4, 2 means that it's just going to trade down a lot of the time, so I don't think this guy is going to see too much play. All right, we are rounding out the end of the monocolored cards. Three mana, three, two, beast. When Sylvan Brush Strider enters the battlefield, you gain two life. So this is kind of like a razor tooth, the the enraged dinosaur that gains life when you when it gets enraged. Um, similar effect. Um, might might be a good sideboard card against aggro decks. Although I do think the dinosaur is better. Also a relevant creature type. Dinosaurs are way cooler than beasts. Okay. Um, moving on, Axe Creature, 4 mana, 3, 4, Vanilla. Um, there's just better options than this. Mammoth Spider, 5 mana, 3, 5 with Reach. We have This has already been in the format. We haven't have it. We haven't had it see much play in Standard Popper, but um, it, if for whatever reason there is a um, kind of slower green deck in the format, um, if you are playing blue-green, you're not going to have the best removal, and you're going to need to rely on just having big butts um to to block stuff with to make sure you get to your end game so mammoth spider might find a home in the simic deck we will have to wait and see Ooh, rampaging renhorn this card is great five mana four four beast with riot so it's either a five mana four four haste or a five mana five five um both those rates are really good so if you are playing like um uh you know alana war elves aggro green deck um this card is going to be great speaking of cards that are great a seven mana beast six six riot and trample so this is either a seven mana six six haste trample or a seven mana seven seven trample so um <laughs> you have no idea how many games of limited that i have won or lost off the back of this guy just being six hasty damage with trample out of nowhere um that is a very powerful effect of course seven mana is a lot especially in standard popper so um i don't think you're ever going to want to play four of this guy in your deck you're going to need to play a bunch of support and especially your for sure land of war elves and then probably like one or two other ramp effects if you want to um effectively play this guy but geez if you can get to seven mana this guy is this guy is powerful very impressive all right um there is a locket in each um color combination so we have seen the lockets do very well in our mid-rangey to control decks um right if you're trying to get to wrecking beast you'll probably want to play one of the green lockets um don't know if uh there's going to be like a blue white mid-range or a blue white um 
a blue white uh, control deck but if there is azorius locket might be in it right we've seen scholar of stars the four mana three two draw card if you control an artifact um that card was good in blue white aggro equipment um might be good in blue white control with locket who knows we'll see law mage is binding so so we're getting into the um the gold cards now these cards are usually on average more powerful um, but here we have Law Mages binding a blue, a white, and a colorless for an enchantment aura. It does have flash, and you enchant a creature, that creature cannot attack or block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. So this is better than Luminous Bonds, um, because it stops their activated abilities, and it has flash. So if you are in this color combination, um, this card is just way better than Luminous Bonds. Uh, Senate Griffin, 4 mana, 3, 2 flying. It, it, it does have hybrid mana, so you can pay either 2 white, white, 2 blue, blue, or or 2 a white and a blue. So you can play this in your mono white deck or your mono blue deck if you want to. It is a 3, 2 Griffin with flying when it enters the battlefield. Scry 1. Um, I, I don't think this guy is going to see play. Um, our 4 drops have to be a little bit better than this um, in order to see play in standard popper. Sphinx's Insight. Two blue, or excuse me, two colorless, a white, and a blue. Instant, draw two cards. Addendum, if you cast this spell during your main phase, you gain two life as well. So instant speed card draw is good if you're planning on playing a bunch of essence scatters and cancels, because um, you can leave your mana up to represent a counter spell. And then if they don't play anything that you want to counter, you can still use your mana effectively to draw cards. Um, but then the addendum makes you want to kind of cast this during your main phase, which means that if you are casting this during your main phase most of the time, I don't know if paying the extra mana is going to be more... Paying the extra mana to gain the two life, it might just be better to just play Divination in this slot. But we'll have to wait and see. Azorius Knight Arbiter. I think this card is very strong. Um, it is a 5 mana, 2-5 um, human knight with vigilance, and it can't be blocked. So it's basically going to be hitting your opponent for 2 every turn and playing defense with its 2-5 body. Um, so if there is some sort of blue-white mid-range control-ish deck, I think that this is going to be a pretty reasonable finisher in that deck. Unfortunately, this does compete on the curve with Salvager of Secrets, so we will um, we'll wait and see if... Uh, how the the blue white um mid-range decks shape up this could also just be a curve topper in a blue white aggro deck right uh, especially if you're playing like equipment to put onto your unblockable guy who knows but this card is powerful be very surprised if this does not see any play at all moving on to our orzov gold cards final payment is a white and a black for an instant as an additional cost to cast this spell you either pay five life or sacrifice a creature or enchantment and then um what it does is it destroys target creatures. So being able to kill anything is nice, um, but and being able to pay this and paying five life, if you're an aggressive deck and you are just pushing, you're on the front foot, right? You're you're pushing damage. Um, you don't care as much about your five life. But if you are on your back foot, you don't want to be paying that five life. So you want to be putting this into a deck that has creatures that you don't mind sacrificing. Speaking of having creatures you don't mind sacrificing, Imperious Oligarch is great. Excuse me. White, black for a 2 1 human cleric with vigilance and afterlife 1. So this guy plays offense and defense, and um, when they do eventually trade with it, which they will have to do one way or another because it has vigilance, you are going to get a 1 1 flying um, spirit token left behind when it's done. So th this card is just great value. Uh, if there's a, a white black deck, it's going to be playing this card. All right, Orzov Locket. Again, mid range decks um, to control decks really like this effect. Um, it ramps you to your expensive stuff, and then later in the game, when you're mana flooded, you can just pop it and draw two cards. Um, Viscopa Vampire, we've seen Lifelink be a very powerful effect. Um, this is a, the hybrid spell, so it can be in a mono white deck or a mono black deck. Having one toughness is a little bit of a liability, right? Child of Night doesn't really see that much play because it has one toughness, but, you know, Lifelink is powerful enough that I'm not going to completely rule this card out. Grasping Thrall, 5 mana, 3-3 three, three flying. When Grasping Thrall enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. Um, you know, the, the life gain is nice, the dealing damage to your opponent is nice, but um, if you are a black-white aggressive deck, I don't think you're going to want to play this guy over Angel of Dawn. If you are a black-white control deck, I think there's better cards to end the game with. Um, but gaining life in a control deck is... Um, is a desirable effect so who knows this might see play there 
All right, moving on to the Rakdos gold cards. Here we have our hybrid card. So you're either paying one black or you're paying one red for this card. It's a 1-1 one, one devil. When it dies, it deals one damage to any target, right? So you can block a 2-2 two, two with it. The, it deals one damage to the 2-2. Two, two, and then when it dies, you can deal the second damage to the 2-2. Two, two. So this is going to trade up a lot. Or it might just block their one toughness creature, shoot their other one toughness creature. That's like the, the best case scenario. So Footlight Fiend is... Um, is a good card don't know what deck it's going to go into might just go into mono red might just go into mono black who knows we'll we'll have to wait and see Rakdos Locket, the black red control deck will love this card so this already has a home um very much looking forward to putting this into the black red control deck Rakdos roused about uh one black one red one colorless for a three two ogre warrior when it becomes blocked it deals one damage to the player or planeswalker it is attacking so basically you attack with your three two even if they trade it with their two drop you're still going to deal one damage to them which means you're going to turn on spectacle so um i think there are other better ways to ensure you're turning on spectacle um but if that's what your deck is about then this card seems reasonable rafter demon it is a four mana four two um and then you can spectacle it for five. So this is one of those cards where the spectacle spectacle cost is actually more than the regular cost, but you do get a bonus if you pay the spectacle cost. So it's a four mana four two or a five mana four two that makes them discard a card when it enters the battlefield. So burglar rat we've seen see a lot of play in the format. Rafter demon is a as a five mana burglar rat. Uh, it, there's a chance that they'll just have no cards left in their hand at that point. And then a 4 mana 4-2 is just not that great. I'd be surprised if this guy sees a ton of play, but who knows? I could be wrong. Uh, get the point, 5 mana, destroy target creature, scry 1 at instant speed. This might be better than Deadly Visit in the red-black control deck. Deadly Visit lets you look at one extra card, but it is a sorcery, so... Um, that's basically the trade-off that you have to consider personally i think deadly visit is a little more powerful because getting to get that extra card selection is um really appealing but um instant speed is also pretty nice all right gruel locket um if there is a green deck that just wants to play ramp into big dudes gruel locket could be a possibility so keep your eye on this one um rubble slinger three mana two three reach um I guess this is an okay sideboard card against the white aggro decks. Um, block their healers, hawks, and stuff. Don't think this is going to be a main deck card. Um, but it, it 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 is interesting that you can sideboard this in your um, red aggro deck if you want to. Since it is a hybrid card. Okay, moving on. We got a green, a red, and a colorless 3-3 Viachino Warrior. Can't be blocked by creature tokens. There are a fair amount of creature tokens in the format, and just a 3 mana 3-3 is solid, but I I don't think that this guy does too much that's special. Savage Smash. Uh, green, a red, and a colorless for a sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. So it basically allows your small creature to take out their medium creature or your medium creature to take out their big creature. Um, this is slow. It is clunky. If they have a removal spell in response, you're going to cry. But it is a powerful enough effect that I, I'd consider playing some copies. Um, but I think that Rabbit Bite might just still be better. All right, um, the last of the Gruul um, gold cards. This card is great. It is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Cat Beast with Riot and Trample. So again, it's either going to be a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Haste Trample or a 4-mana 4-4 four, four Trample. And it has this second ability that says 6-mana uh, Frenzied Ar Ar Arinix gets plus 3 plus 0 until end of turn. So it is a decent sized body on 4 and it is a mana sync late in the game. So if there is a red green kind of like mid range curve out deck, um, I think this card is going to see play in it. Moving on to Simic, we have um, Applied Biomancy. It is a blue and a green for an instant. Choose one or both. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, or and or return target creature to its owner's hand. Um, if you are in a situation where you can get both of these off, it is pretty good. Um, but sometimes it. It takes a fair amount of things to be going right for you to get both halves to look really good. And if you're only getting one half out of this card, then it's an okay card, but it's not great. So um, we'll we'll see what the Simic deck ends up looking like. This is an option in it. 
I, I don't think it's the most powerful card unless everything is going right. But the floor on the card is pretty bad. Growth Spiral. Speaking of Simic decks, I think that um, if there is a Simic deck that wants to just ramp into big creatures, Growth Spiral is going to be great. So a green and a blue for an instant. It says you draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So you can play this on turn two, put your extra land into play, and then on turn four or on turn three, you have four mana. All right. So you can uh, just start playing your big boom booms a turn sooner. And then uh, late in the game, when you already have all the mana you need, um, you just pay two mana and cycle this to, to get your card back. So Growth Spiral, I think it's going to be an auto four of in the Simic deck um, moving forward. Aeromunculus, a blue, a green, and a colorless for a 2-3 homunculus mutant with flying. And then you can pay four to adapt it one. So it's a 3 mana 2 3 flyer, and if once you put 4 more mana into it, then it becomes a 3 4 flyer. Um, this is interesting because it doesn't quite play with the game plan of like wanting to curve out into big giant stuff um, for the Simic deck, but if there does happen to be kind of like a lower to the ground blue green aggro deck, then this this that deck is going to want this card i don't know if like the curve out mid-rangey blue green deck is going to want this card we'll see simic locket um again right if there is a curve out mid-rangey um blue green deck it's definitely going to want simic locket and then scuttle gator uh, six mana six six with defender you can pay eight mana to to adapt it for three and as long as Scuttle Gator has a plus one plus one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So uh, Scuttle Gator, you have to put a total of, t what is this, 8 plus 6? You have to put a total of 14 mana into it over two turns, but once you do, it's a 9-9. Nine, nine. So, you know, that's that's pretty big. I, I don't think this card is, is going to be that good. I think if you are playing a Simic deck, that you want the top of your curve to be these two creatures. These two creatures are great. And then... um. Rampaging Payloth, the, the card with Kicker from Dominaria. 4 mana 4 4 or the 8 mana 7 7. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, that is it for the previews or the, the spoilers. The rest of the cards are just the Guild Gates, which um, I guess they do open up some possibilities, but we already had the M19 cycle of Taplands, um, and there aren't any common Gates Matter cards besides the, the Boro Sky from the last set that no ended up not seeing any play so uh you know that's the set um as i said i think that there is going to be a good red black aggro deck I, I think each guild is basically going to have one at least one deck um fitting their theme from this uh from this set like the rakdos aggro deck is going to be good um the the orzov deck will probably be like a sacrifice -y token deck um the simic deck will probably be like a curve out mid-range deck um and then what did i miss the gruel deck will probably be a curve out curve out mid-range deck we'll see and then yeah there is a bunch of possibility for the monocolored decks right um skewer the critics might just put mono red aggro back on the map right it kind of took a back seat to healer's hawk for a little while but it might might just be back um Blade Juggler might just make Mono Black aggro good again. Ill-Gotten Inheritance makes um, all forms of black control and black aggro um, pretty powerful. We might be seeing more enchantment removal in people's sideboards. Um, and yeah, well, let me know if you think I misevaluated anything. If uh, let me know what you're most excited about about building. It might, I might be wrong, and Persistent Practitioners might be the most powerful card in the set. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the kids do with the first, um, with the first, uh, U Standard Popper Tournament. Which, by the way, the first U Standard Popper Tournament featuring Ravnica Allegiance is going to be on February 9th over at the Planet. Tournament starts at 1.30. We should go until about 5.30. Entry fee is a dollar. Ravnica Allegiance will be legal. We hope to see you there. If you want to support what we do, if you want to support Standard Popper content on the web or you want to support you Standard Popper tournaments here on Oahu, um, please consider becoming a patron subscriber. We are 100% donor funded and um, we run at least two you Standard Popper tournaments each month and then we also run two 
youth standard proper scholarship tournaments each year so if you want to support that project support what we do please consider becoming a patron subscriber um none of this would be possible without the support of patrons like you all right thank you for stopping by let us know what you think in the comments hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i will catch you later peace